Hi, everyone. Welcome to SAG After Foundation's Conversations at Home. My name is Jessica Radloff. I'm the West Coast editor at Glamour. And the foundation has set up a COVID relief fund in order to support thousands of union performers who are going through tough times. Since March, thanks to your donations, the foundation has given nearly $7 million in emergency aid to more than 7,000 performers and their families. If you are a SAG AFTRA member and you need help, please ask. And if you can help, please give. Information can be found in the description of this video. And thank you again for your support. <laughs> Halston follows the legendary fashion designer as he leverages his single invented name into a worldwide fashion empire that is synonymous with luxury, sex, status, and fame, literally defining the era that he lives in, 1970 and 80s New York. With me now is executive producer and star Ewan McGregor. Actress Krista Rodriguez, who plays Broadway actress and the legendary Liza Minnelli. Hi, Krista. <laughs> Next up, we have Rebecca Diane, who stars as Italian jewelry designer and model Elsa Peretti. Hi, Rebecca. Hi. Next up, we have Gianfranco Rodriguez, I hope I said that okay, who plays Halston's lover, Victor Hugo. And finally, we have David Pitu, who plays Halston's creative director, Joe Eula. Welcome, you all. Hi. Thank you. Hi. Oh, it is so good to see you guys. I'm just blown away by the entire series. Ewan, I'm going to start with you. Um, why did you want to take on the role of Halston? What excited you most? I met Dan, I met Dan and he, he excited me um, in terms of meeting someone that I felt like I would have a good relationship, a good working relationship with. I think I, 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 I just, I want to get something, uh, like grow from working with somebody. I want to get something creative out of it, out of the experience. And I think I just don't want to do it if that's not the case. And when I met Dan, I really felt like that would be the case, that he would take me somewhere and I would get, I would learn from the experience of playing Halston, who I didn't really know very much about when I met Dan. So it was Dan firstly, and then the more, I, he talked to me about Halston, showed me some amazing photographs. I was intrigued by this famous man I didn't know anything about. He's like the most famous person I'd never heard of. And, um, and then the world, his, the world that he created or lived in with this great band, his merry band of, of players, um, was, was, was also a great treat, you know, to, to recreate and to live in that time for a little bit was 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 really cool but it was it was Dan and it was Halston himself in terms of a character where, you know somebody who's very complicated secretive a genius passionate driven cruel cutting um loyal there was just so many interesting sides to his an addict so many different sides to his character that that as an actor you you you're looking you know you would jump at the chance to play. Yeah, I was so blown away by the voice, the mannerisms that you bring to this role. What was your preparation like and how challenging was it to really just discover the essence of who Halston was? Uh, well, there's lots of him to see, which is a great bonus. You know, there's lots of interviews with Halston. There's lots of footage. He loved that the, later on in his life, he loved to shoot everything that happened. It was like, he was sort of live streaming his life before before there was Instagram. He had, a, he had a camera crew in his workshop. He sort of stage managed everything for the camera and the later, I think it drove everybody mad. Um, so there's lots of him to watch and to listen to. Great interviews with him. And I was always looking for stuff of him sort of backstage because he's very on Halston. His, he's very on in front of the camera when he's being interviewed. But there were some great things we found. There's a great fashion show. There's great footage from a fashion show, a trip to Detroit that they took. At some point, he, do he donated some of his um, uh, original dresses to a museum, a new fashion museum that was being set, set up in Detroit. And there was a fundraiser they all went to. And there's footage of him backstage that I loved because he's really silly and naughty. And he's really flirting with the cameraman. There's obviously some gorgeous young guy filming behind the scenes and House is just really flirty with him. And then you see him with his models as well, that he's really relaxed and funny and fun. And I think there's a there's a 
tendency to think that it was super high pressure and everything was stress and you know everything was manic and crazy but in actual fact he's having he seems to be really at home behind the curtain watching everyone going out and doing little alterations before they go so that was really useful and then there was another brilliant interview sorry I'm going on and on there's another brilliant interview that he did with Donahue in Chicago when Donahue did mm. the show from there and he's surrounded it's so he's surrounded by all these midwestern ladies and that's where he comes from so the longer the interview goes on the more relaxed Halston gets and the, and he just he, He's like they're they they're asking questions about what they should what would you wear underneath. He's like, oh, you don't need to wear anything underneath. No underwear, no bra, no panties. And they're all like, oh my god! And you could see that he really likes it. You know that he likes sort of shocking them. And then talking about how much his dresses cost, and he just sort of he becomes unguarded a bit. And then at the same time, during that same interview, how um, Donahue asks him a few things where I think you can see Halston thinking that he's being made fun of. So there's a tiny, you see a little paranoia in him as well. Mm. So we're looking for stuff like that. You know, there's lots of Halston just being on and interviewed and glorious and glamorous. And then you're, I was always looking for the uh, this sort of behind the scenes stuff, I guess. Yeah. You know, I always say, I was telling Alexis Martin Woodall, who is the executive producer on the series, that the sign of a great series for me at least is when I go down a rabbit hole to wanting to know everything there is about the story, the characters. And one thing I did not realize is how you are all playing real people. I knew some of some of you were real, obviously with Liza, but you know, I didn't really know Elsa's backstory, for instance. So Rebecca, Krista, David, Gianfranco, what can you say about the rabbit hole that you all went down to discover who these people were um, and, and to find out basically, like I said to you, and the essence of them to bring to this role? Rebecca, I'll have you go first. <laughs> um, yeah, that was, I mean, that was definitely one of the most interesting part of the whole process is getting to know this woman whose work I knew, but I didn't know anything about her. And obviously Dan was really he helpful with, he has a well of documents and old magazines and, you know, uh, books to, to show about all this time and all those people. So that was incredibly um, amazing resources to have but just yeah learning about this woman who you know is one of the a very w modern um woman very very much of a pioneer in a, in a, in a way obviously in, in in jewelry but also in her way of approaching um creativity and her way of approaching uh her her life as a as a as a woman of in in that world at that time it was very unusual you know, she left everything behind. Her family wasn't supportive of her choices. And, and so she kind of had to had to build everything from the ground up and never compromised on anything. And, um, you know, she was this incredible force of nature. And at the same time, this very, very vulnerable and um, sensitive person. And I think her relationship with Austin was um, kind of this friendship, love affair, mentorship kind of um you know all and everything at once and you know that's why in the in the show it becomes so explosive eventually is it just there's just not enough room for both of them in the same room anymore <laughs> <laughs> it is it's really true and she was such a remarkable woman i'm so glad i know so much more about her now um you, mm. you just bring such a liveliness to her thank um, you of course. Yeah, I'm glad that people will get to finally know who she is through the series actually I think she's a great example for young women today. <laughs> a thousand percent. And, and we see also how she stands up for herself in a later episode about knowing her worth. I thought that was such an empowering scene. It's so modern. Yes. Yes. For any, but for a man or a woman, it's yeah, of course. to know what you bring to the table. That was an amazing yeah. scene that I don't want to give away. Uh, <laughs> viewers will be able to see it. Um, Krista, how about you? What kind of research did you talk to Liza at all for this? Um, did you watch <laughs> things? What, what can you tell us? I watched everything. Uh, I truly, at some point in the depths of my research, you could drop me down at any date in Liza's life. And I could tell you what she was wearing who she was sleeping with and who she was married to. Like <laughs> I knew everything about her um, at the drop of a hat. Um, and I, I love that kind of research. I love the cerebral research and the sort of, you know, it's really rare to be able to play a character that you can go back and find these exact things. You have images of the day they were born. It's a huge part of her life. 
she said often that I was born and someone took my picture. Like it's, it, it shaped her entirely the fact that she was the child of famous parents and that there was never anything such as privacy. There was never any, you know, um, she, she just grew up in this certain way. So that was really something that I used to inform who she was. Um, the rabbit holes I went down to are her earliest performances. One of my favorite videos I went watched over and over and over again was um, her on bandstand in 1967. She's um, almost, she's like barely 20 and she's doing Liza with a Z. Uh, and, you know, we don't know the version that she, that we've all seen until she already won an Oscar. She's already, you know, become a very established star in her own right. And here she is a child basically in black and white wearing this beautiful 60s crusted collar with like diamond crusted collar with like a, you know, a Mia Farrow close haircut. And she's gangly and she has no idea what she's doing and she's she's testing out jokes and they're not landing and and it's so cool to be able to see that version of Liza with a Z and not the one we all know so I watch that obsessively because where we meet Halston in the show that's how they meet is him coming to see her do this performance so that performance lies somewhere in between this gangly girl and this Oscar winner and I got to kind of figure out how those two mesh. And then, um, yeah, I just like loved, I, I loved everything that she did. And again, like something that Rebecca said, I think is really true for Liza. What I didn't realize is how ahead of her time she was. What a woman that was, she somehow was able to be completely connected to her groin. Like the way she performs is so down and dirty and she's bossy and she's doing things that ladies were not doing at that time, yet she's still able to move through the world in a way that doesn't, she wasn't labeled anything that was unsavory. Uh, those women at that time might be tramps or, you know, kind of seen as a scary. She was still endearing and lovable and able to be sort of scooped up in people's arms, yet she really was in touch with her femininity, her sexuality, her body. And that, I, I realized that it was something that I loved about her growing up, but I couldn't name. And now as a woman, I name what it is. And that, it's that she she was unabashedly a woman in every form. And I, I just was obsessed with that. And the friendship and the camaraderie that you have with you and the two of you as, as Halston and, and Liza, it just, there, there's something so warm about it and so touching to see that kind of friendship and that trust uh, that you don't always see on screen. It was, it's just, I loved every time the two of you were together. Um, it was, it was really like a comforting hug. And by the way, did you have to sing with Liza with a Z in the audition? I know you're a singer, but did they mm -hmm. make- I, did, I didn't, I didn't sing Liza with a Z. I sang maybe this time and I sang another song from the special, uh, You've Let Yourself Go. And then, uh, yeah, then they told me that I'd be doing Lives with the Z and then I gotcha and Bonjour Paris. That was all after I'd been cast that I was told. I have that song, and then I have you in when you say Halston for your day, Halston for your every day. Oh. <laughs> Out of my head. It was such a it. treat for us. It was such a treat for us because it was all during COVID, you know, and we weren't, we got to see Krista perform. And oh, yeah, it was like going to a show. It was like going yeah. to a show. It was so amazing. And it's also, we knew and loved her. And then we got to see her performing as Liza. And it was really, all of those were such special moments. Just amazing. Yeah. I cannot even imagine. John Franco, what was it like? What was the most challenging aspect of playing Victor? Because you have such <laughs> physical scenes. I mean, this this guy's a work of art. Um, so what what was the most complicated uh part that kept you up the night before you filmed? Um so that's a great question. Uh I think two things kept me up. Um at night, one was when I had to do the scene at the hospital. That was uh, that was very important to me because I wanted to make sure that um, I would do justice to you know the thing that's happening in that scene and the people that have somehow gone through that. Um, it was a little tricky, but it, I felt like I, I had a lot of responsibility on that scene, and I wanted to make sure that you know that I would prepare for that the best I could. And uh, the other thing was the fact that this is really my first time working on TV. So it was 
like again a lot of responsibility um just preparing for it because i wanted i mean everybody's so great i wanted to do my part and be at least half as great as everybody else so yeah oh my gosh what was it like then meeting you in for the first time terrifying <laughs> <laughs> we hated it's each sure other to be terrifying when you meet him <laughs> I no, also, actually, I that's a uh, scary off the bat. You know what I mean? Terrifying. Yeah. No, <laughs> actually, that's a that was that was a great that's a great great story because we were supposed to meet up on a Sunday for lunch, and that's how I was going to meet all of them because they have been working together already for episode one. And um, so I go to the the place where we're supposed to meet. The restaurant is upstairs at like a seventh floor, I think, or something like that. And then I'm going up, I get to the, the bottom floor and uh, I get on the escalator. And then I look back and I see a guy and he looks like you. <laughs> I was like, I'm not, I mean, that looks like you, but I'm not going to stare at that. So then I looked away and then I looked again and then he's looking at me and he was like, you're my Victor. And I was like, and you're my Halston. So we, didn't have, we didn't have anybody introduce us. It was funny. Yeah. It was funny. Yeah, and then we just met that. together. Yeah, it was from the get-go. We we had that, you know, we knew we were going to have to do a lot of things together. So <laughs> it was great. Yeah. My gosh. Yeah. What do you remember from that, Ewan? I love that you guys met in the elevator. You know, I, no, it was on a, on a yeah. Escalator, escalator. No, escalator. Or escalator. Escalator. And I, yeah, I remember, yes. I don't know what, exactly what it was about your back silhouette, Jean-Franco, that gave you <laughs> um, something, about it, something about you I just knew, I guess. I thought that's him. That's going to be him. Yeah. Wow. Nice brunch. We went upstairs and we had a nice brunch. We, had we already been shooting? I can't remember. Yes. I think we had. No. We met yeah. Yeah, we yeah had barely. Why did we do that? Like a day or two. Right. It was very new, very early. Yeah. yeah. We were all getting to know each other. Still. Yeah. Yeah. Right. By the way, before I get to David, something that Alexis told me that just blew me away. I said, "Did you guys actually go to Paris?" For <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, of course. Middle yes. of course. Yes. Yonkers. Well, that's what she said. She goes, "We filmed in Yonkers," and I was like, "Okay." I mean, the set design, the editing, the cinematography, the costumes. I mean, just give you guys all the awards right now. I just. It was so damn brilliant. Um, so David, you were telling me right before we started the panel that you mm. sketch sometimes. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, tell me about becoming Joe Eula and also the relationship that Joe has with Paulson because it's a really special one that that lasts a long time, which was very unusual. So talk to me about the importance of that in Halston's life as well. Well, I think they met uh, uh, in probably in Paris when Halston was going over to Bergdorf's uh, to, I guess, do buying, and 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 Joe was going to Paris for the to sketch the shows for Eugenia Shepard for the new Her the New York Herald Tribune, and then I think that's how they got to know each other. And then Joe Uli Joe Eula was known for giving these am amazing parties which Liza would come to and Hall, uh, Warhol and all those kind of people. So he was kind of this like demi mon celebrity in New York, you know? And um, one of the things that I read about him that I loved was that he was um, one of those people that immediately, even if you were a stranger, would just like assess your look like uh, upon meeting you. You know, like, have you ever thought of wearing your hair shorter or you know, that kind of thing? And that was just like so telling, that kind of detail, just like, sweetie, what if you wore this like that way, you know? And so you can see probably how that fed Halston a lot. And I think Elsa and Halston and Joe really like fed each other, you know, creatively. And, um, you know, according to the the, stories it was really like olympic tower and that's when joe kind of sort of had it and um i think he thought the golden era was over but i think he always kept like a deep love and respect for halston's talent i mean that that was clear he always said that he was you know his he had genius his hands were genius and um 
But yeah, I don't know. I mean, it must have been hard for him to kind of always work. In, he was always working in collaboration with somebody. So you never know, like, how much that affects somebody, you know, being in the shadow or behind the, yeah. you know. But yeah. I, I don't know. Absolutely. But he had I, a great I, life. I mean, he worked, he was, he was in the, the, the like, 10th Mountain Division in World War II when he was, like, a teenager fighting in the Italian campaign in World War II. <laughs> so it's like, and and he said that he, when asked if he had a relationship later in life, he said he had all the men he needed in the service when he was in the army. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. He, he oh. was really a great character. Yeah, all of them are such great characters. That's what's been so fun. And you and also you I you didn't mention this before, but you learned how to sew for the role and to drape and to pin, right? Well, I mean, that's no small extent, feat. To an extent. I mean <laughs> I, I had to I learned how to I learned to look like I knew what I was doing. That was important. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I could I don't think I could knock out anyone a dress right now, but <laughs> I made a. I did make a pair of pants. I I I got a sewing machine and I would became obsessed with looking at clothes, just like how they how they went together. You know, like where how is that? Where are the seams? And I, I was interested um on uh, and sort of dissecting it in my mind. You know how the fashion would work practically. And then um, I did have a mannequin in my house and fabric. And Jerry Anna, our brilliant costume designer, taught me. You know, the three dresses that you see me actually create in the series, I, I had to do it. I wanted to, to not give myself away. I wanted to really look like I knew what I was doing. So I practiced that a lot. And um, just the simple act of pinning fabric together, um, I really wanted to get that right. I just, I, I was always frustrated that I didn't have his hands because he had beautiful long fingers and really elegant hands, which I don't really have. And um, but, I, but I wanted to be able to pin like I really knew what I was doing. I think if it suddenly it cut to me and I was like, yeah, trying to get it, it would give me away. Also, I could have hurt somebody. I didn't want to print or Rebecca. Or, um, so, uh, so I just learned to look like I knew what I was doing, I hope. And the, the most important thing about him, I think, in that respect was him, was the way he looked in the mirror. That he was, uh, there's all these amazing photographs and footage of him, always with his hands on his model, like moving the, but he's always just soaking in the beauty in the mirror. You know, he's really, He's, I've never seen anybody look at the world like he does. He's just like a sponge. I love that. I, I thought it was really interesting to get to know his way of designing, Halston. It was, some of it was so magical. I'm like, you know, just like a big tablecloth with like a hole for the neck, you know? And you just like, <laughs> suddenly it's like a dress. And then some of the elaborate <laughs> shapes. Remember we looked at some of the sort of, the actual shapes that he, that he would- Yeah, when they're before. like, put it, and that's right. just boggling. You're like, how does he work that out? Like, I mean, right. no. Ah, by the way, for all of you, your character, every character has such a unique look, their aesthetic, whether it's Liza's eyelashes or, you know, Rebecca, you're with your hair and like, you know, so what, and Jean Franco with your hair as well. Um, <laughs> I was saying he reminds me of, of one half of the, the guys from Hall and Oates. I forget that's, which one. Oh, I've heard that. I've heard that a lot. <laughs> but what? <laughs> What did you specifically love about your character's look that really helped you embody who they are? Was it either a piece of clothing you put on or like David with, with Joe's glasses that you put it on and you were like, you know, now I feel like I'm that person. For, for me, um, it was the thing I liked the least, to be honest. But uh, when we were doing our hair and makeup test, Dan came running up to me and said, you don't have brown eyes. And I said, I know. <laughs> and so... He was like, we got to get you brown eyes. So within minutes, I was in on the way to the eye doctor getting fitted for color contact. So it really was, we could do everything down to the nitty gritty, but the moment the contacts went in, that's when I, and like, there were times when I would take them out because I don't wear contacts, so they would bother me. But, uh, and I remember you and being like, are those your eyes? I'm like, yeah, these are what's under there. Like you would forget that I, I would look completely different even if I had all the lies of gear on without the brown mm. contacts in. So I'm grateful for the contacts, but I'm so glad I don't have to wear them anymore. <laughs> you can put it on your resume, contact you lens wear. You can't wear contacts. <laughs> one, of your new, one of your new skills, always always good to keep growing as a performer. Exactly. You know, those little things. David, what about you? What, what really made you feel like Joe? Uh, probably the mustache, I think. 
having grown the mustache that was real so i mean it was very it's so 70s you know and it's just i don't know it was groomed well and the mustache and the glasses were like you know key so I, and i was lucky because i did get to pick out the glasses oh we, you did we picked, yeah we picked out a bunch at this vintage place in the village and then showed dan you know out of these like five you know and you know which one did and we all kind of agreed on the same and they were real vintage glasses from the 70s they had that nice heavy weight you know cool so yeah that's so cool rebecca how about you <clears throat> i mean the hair for sure was you know it was not my hair it was a wig the whole, the whole time i did not cut my hair because we had to go back from when elsa's hair is longer in the earlier episodes right. and I, I, every time we would, you know, people, we would see each other out of the, the trailer and my, my hair was done. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> forgetting that I didn't have short hair. So that was, that was definitely the, the last touch. But the whole, the whole thing, the, the clothes, everything, you move differently once you're wearing those clothes also. So it really helps just kind of, you know, imagining what that person would have felt like in those clothes. Yeah. Absolutely. I know I want ultra suede now. It was never part of my vocabulary. <laughs> now I'm like ultra suede and Halston for your everyday. I mean, this <laughs> tell you this too serious it stuck with me. Um, Jean Franco, how about you? Um, for me, I think actually Please say the jock strap. <laughs> <I did. laughs> no, yeah, actually the jock strap, yeah, that was a thing because I'm wearing one in every scene, no matter if you see it or not. Uh, I'm wearing a jock strap in all of them. Um, the, but the bracelets were actually a big thing for me because I have so many pictures of um, Victor and I could see the bracelets that he had. And uh, Jeriana did such an amazing job that she found the bracelets in Europe and it, like she found everything. And uh, because I do have to undress every now and then, then looking at the bracelets would, uh, would do the, the trick for me. Um, the boots were also a thing because it became a thing for the character to be walking all the time with boots and that that kind of did something different for me with the walking. And I think um, what Rebecca said about the hair, the fact that I started with longer hair and then um, they cut it, then that also did a, a, a big thing for me. Like I would feel very different. Like if his attitude was supposed to change and the hair change helped me a lot with that so wait you and tell me then what what really helped you embody halston was what was it well there's a, such a distinct look his his sort of signature look when uh, at the end of our uh, episode one when he slicks his hair back and he puts on the bronzer and um the black turtleneck and the sunglasses and the cigarette obviously the cigarette is always 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 there but um, <laughs> that look sort of for me was when i became that when it when it was in that look it was i felt much more like him the the majority of our first episode was um trickier because it was this his sort of six late 60s into the early 70s look with the longer hair and a more sort of hippy dippy stuff and i i suppose that's we're just less familiar with him looking that way mm -hmm. um so some of that didn't fe didn't make me feel like him but at the same time he was sort of becoming himself you know what i mean and maybe he didn't feel much like himself yet um so it all worked hand in hand but once i became the halston we know and love in the black turtleneck then i, I felt very like him and i and i was so lucky to with Jerry and our costume designer was just so amazing and Mark our brilliant um set designer you know would they put us in the right clothes in the right environment and it was and with these brilliant actors it was just such a joy all of it you know um but yeah I had some favorites the red that had this very long red coat that I when it's all going um when it's all when it's all falling around his ears and I come into the office, the Olympic Tower late one night and just walk through the red room in my red coat and look out the window and I'm thinking, feel it, feel it all crumbling away. It was pretty cool, that jacket, that coat. Well, you're all just amazing in these roles. It's, it's just such a treat to watch. Um, and I can't say enough 
great things about it. Um, I know we have to wrap, but I just want to thank all of you. I could keep talking for two hours because mm. it's just such a magnificent series and what you all bring to it is extraordinary. So thank you so much. And um, I look forward to, uh, to hopefully seeing you all at the Emmys later this year. Thank you so much. Thank you. Just throwing it out there because you all deserve it. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. Have a good night, everyone. Good, good night. night. Thank you.